there and welcome to episode number 45 of The Evidence. This is your buddy Dave over Mars X3D and we have some very interesting things to look at today. A couple of things that I found uh, courtesy of Neville Thompson and Keith Laney who do wonderful work with their gigapans and image analysis. And uh, we're going to also be looking at something that Mark Summers has found. A uh, very interesting piece that uh, it could be natural, I suppose, but uh, yeah, you, you tell me what you think. And then we did dig down, deep down, into the archives and pulled out a good old good one that uh, has fascinated me for a long time for its implications. It would seem that it might be part of a fallout shelter or possibly a marker for radioactive material. Who knows? Uh, you got to make up your mind about that. And by the way, everything you need to know is down in the comments below. Links and uh, email if you want to send me an anomaly that you found that you think might look good in 3D. And uh, links to all the images, yada yada, lots of stuff. So uh, let's dive into it and uh, stop talking. I love Neville's Giga Macros. They're so clear and easy to search, and the snapshots don't disappear into cyber limbo like they do over at Gigapan. I know Upart is a new term for some of you, and all it really means is out-of-place artifact. Mars is about as out-of-place for an artifact as it can get. If you swallow NASA's rigid denial of anything, pointing to life anywhere in our solar system. Anyway, there are two strange ones in our context image. Let's take a closer look. Now this is nuts, isn't it? Is this a sarcophagus? A container of some kind? To me, it looks almost exactly like an airline shipping case for a stand-up base. But then, what's that handle sticking out on the left side? And notice along the top left edge, the straight lines and the really faint carving. See what I mean? I sure wish we could go over there, grab that handle, and open it up. And take a look at this thing. What the heck is that all about? If that's rock, how did this tongue sticking out not break off during the erosion process. And while it was eroding, exactly how did the wind and sand make it not only the same width and the same thickness throughout its length, but also impart a perfect curve to the underside? That chunk to the left of it looks like it broke off the main piece, and you gotta admit, it looks rather manufactured itself, with those concentric squares and right angles. I suspect both these zoo parts have been rock shopped by NASA to hide their true appearance. Keith Laney has been doing some beautiful work lately with the spirit images. He's making it possible to see them more clearly than we ever have before. It takes a lot of work and specialized knowledge to create these gigapans, and I for one am mighty glad Keith is out there doing this for the larger community. Thanks, Keith. So anyway, you can see the anomaly even in the context view down there on the lower right. What are we looking at here? First of all, its color and albedo don't match any of the geology surrounding it. And of course, it's got that smoothly machined metallic look with a perfect sphere on one end. And of course, the sphere is perfectly centered on the rod. Natural forces sure are clever, aren't they? We know from Dr. John Brandenburg's excellent book, Death on Mars, The Discovery of a Planetary Nuclear Massacre, that radioisotopes still hum in the atmosphere all over the planet. It seems odd that in the vast, mostly flat plane in which Curiosity now explores to see what looks like a cairn popping up out of the sand. The rocks look purposely placed by design. 
Look at all those non-fractal shapes, including what look like partially buried structural components. The rocks on top seem purposely shaped, showing a cubical block and what look like decorative or possibly shapes meant as a warning. And most puzzling of all, in the lower left corner of this obviously collapsed and corroded structure is a radiation warning sign. Now come on. Would the Martians develop their own identical analog to our own radiation warning sign? It seems quite unlikely, but this does speak to the increasingly voiced beliefs that we have had a presence on Mars for decades. It may be that our own people identified and marked an area of dangerous radioactivity, or perhaps has served as a somewhat impromptu radiation shelter at some point in the past. Whatever the case, there are simply too many things here that are at odd with nature to dismiss this as merely a pile of rocks. Mark Summers has been a contributing member of the anomalous community for a number of years, and he often shares some solid finds with us. This is a find that I guess could be just erosion, but maybe it's something else. Nice to have something really clear for a change, isn't it? This screams artificial to me, but I will admit this could have been very artistically eroded by the random wind currents of Mars. Great find, Mark. Thanks for stopping by and spending a little time with me today. If you liked what you saw today, please give it a thumbs up. That sure helps me out. And if you have an anomaly you'd like me to look at, well, the email is in the description. So this is your buddy Dave, over Mars X3D. Be well.